الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يا عباد الله الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah It is incumbent and it is a must that we remain firm upon our deen especially during times of fitna especially during times of turmoil and calamity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He informs us in His noble book about those kuffar. Allah ta'ala, He says, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُ نُورُ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ They want to extinguish Allah's light with their mouths. وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ But Allah shall complete His light even if the kuffar, they hate it. So it is not strange that we find from the kuffar those who speak ill of Islam, those who speak ill of the Muslims, those who speak ill of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, what they say, it hurts no one but themselves, as their words do not hurt the Prophet ﷺ. Let us reflect and look. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in His noble book, addressing the Prophet ﷺ, Alam nashrah laka sadarak. Allah ta'ala, He says, and have we not opened for you your chest. Alam nashrah laka sadarak. Have we not opened for you your chest? Wa wadu'na anka wizrak. And have removed from you your burden. Alladhi anqada dhahrak. That in which used to weigh down your back. Wa rafa'na laka dhikrak. And we have risen your mention. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى So verily, with every difficulty, then there are reliefs. إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed, with difficulty, there are reliefs. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ So once you have finished with your toil, then worship adamantly your Lord. And unto Him alone place your intentions and unto Him alone place your hope. When we reflect over this tremendous chapter of the Qur'an, small in size, tremendous in meaning, Allah Ta'ala, He says, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ الصَّدَرَكْ Have we not opened for you your chest? قال الحافظ ابن كثير رحمه الله تعالى يعني أما شرحنا لك صدرك Have we not expanded for you your chest? أي نورناه Have we not put inside of it light وجعلناه فسيحا رحيبا واسعا And have we not made it open, expansive, wide, spacious. It's like Allah Ta'ala statement. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ لَكَ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَ And when Allah wants to guide an individual, He opens, He opens His heart. He opens His chest. Islam For Islam, to Islam. وَكَمَا شرح الله صدره 
And as Allah Ta'ala, He has expanded and widened the chest of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. كما شرح الله صدره كذلك جعل شرعه فسيحا واسعا سمحا سهلا لا حرج فيه ولا إصرا ولا ضيق And likewise, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has expanded the chest of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has expanded his legislation, meaning that in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came with, meaning the deen of al-Islam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has opened it, made it expansive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has made it easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the deen easy. Where it has therein no difficulty. It has therein no roughness or no difficulty, nor any restriction. But it is opened. And likewise, you see from this, and we reflect upon this, the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahabu deen illallah. The most beloved deen unto Allah, Al-Hanifiyyah, As-Samha. That the most beloved deen unto Allah, the most beloved religion unto Allah, is that which is upon true Islamic monotheism. That which is upon a tawheed That which is easy. And likewise, and thus you see, the deen of Al-Islam is a deen that is easy. The deen of al-Islam is a deen that is expansive. The deen of al-Islam is a deen that is based upon a tawheed, based upon true monotheism. The deen of al-Islam is a deen that is moderation. Rather, it is a deen that it defines moderation. So we know what is moderation by way of the deen. We know what is extremism by way of the deen. We know what is extreme neglect by way of the deen. The deen is moderation. That which goes too far, that is extremism. That is not the religion. That which comes up short, that is neglect. That is not the religion. So it is not possible that extremism can ever be linked, tied to, or or be used to illustrate or categorize the religion. There is no such thing as Islamic extremism because Islam is a deen of moderation. That which is extremism is not from Islam, is not supported by Islam. That which is from neglect is not supported by Islam. So it is incumbent that we know and we understand. Islam is a deen that is moderate. It is not a, it is not a, a, a deen of extremism. So those who are extreme, they are not following the teachings of Islam. So Islam is free from what they do and their actions. Those who come up extremely neglectful, they are not following the teachings of Islam. So Islam is free for what they do and the like. It is incumbent, it is a must that we understand the likes of this reality. So that we know what is the nature of the deen of Islam. It is a deen of moderation, it is a deen of justice. Ala kulli hal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes on to tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكْ And we have removed from you your wizr. We have removed from you your burden. Imam Nakathiri mentions, يَعْنِي بِمَعْنَى لِيَغْفِرَ, ليغفر لَكَ اللَّهِ مَا تُقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرْ He said this is like the meaning of Allah Ta'ala's statement and that Allah has forgiven you for that which has transpired from your sins and that which will come in the future for your past and future sins. <laughs> that on which had weighed down your back. <laughs> it means inside of the language a sound. وَقَالَ غَيْرُ وَاحِدْ مِنَ السَّلَفِ In more than one of the salaf, they said, فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى أَلَّذِي أَنْقَضَ أَلَّذِي أَنْقَضَ ظَهْرَكِ That in which had war or was a burden upon your back, a أَثْقَلَكَ حَمْلُ That which was hard for you to carry. That which was a burden. 
وقوله تعالى and الله تعالى statement ورفعنا لك ذكرك and we have risen your mention the mention of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم it was risen وقال مجاهد رحمه الله تعالى أي لا أذكر إلا ذكرت معي it is as if Allah Taala is telling the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم I will not be mentioned except that you too will be mentioned meaning أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله that none demeaning the shahada that none has the right to be worshipped the truth except Allah and or I testify that none has the right to be worshipped the truth except Allah and I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah so you find that those who speak ill of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they will be mentioned and then they will be forgotten whereas the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his mention it has been raised the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he will not be forgotten like these lowly individuals will be forgotten but rather his mention it has been raised waqala as-sarsari and as-sarsari he mentions in these lines of poetry he said alam tara أن لا يصح أذاننا ولا فرضنا إن لم نكرره فيهما. He says, and have you not seen that our adhan is not correct, nor our obligatory prayers, meaning nor our prayers in general, it is not correct if he صلى الله عليه وسلم is not mentioned therein, because inside of the adhan and inside of the prayer. There comes the shahada, and in it, it is mention of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So worry not, the deen it shall be uppermost, it shall be dominant. Worry not, the deen it is not in decline, but rather it is on the rise. Worry not, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he will not be forgotten. Whereas those who are in annoyance to him. Then they are the ones who are abbar. They are the ones who will be forgotten. Hada akulu kuli hada astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa li jami al Muslimin. Fastaghfiru fa innahu huwa al Ghafur al Rahim. Bismillah walhamdulillah wassalatu wassalam ala Rasulillah wa bad. Ya ibad Allah is the company is a must to reflect over Allah's Allah's book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He goes on to inform us here in this chapter that which is a bushra that which is a glad tiding to every believer Allah ta'ala he says fa inna ma'al usri yusra that verily with the difficulty there comes relieves with an s inna ma'al usri yusra verily with the difficulty there comes relief relieves yani with an s plural qala imam kathir akhbara ta'ala that allah ta'ala he has informed us anna ma'a al-usri yujad al-yusr that verily when there comes a difficulty it necessitates that there will also be present relieves thumma akkada hadha al-khabar then allah ta'ala he emphasizes this by repeating it وعن الحسن قال كانوا يقولون إن الحسن he said they used to say لا يغلب عسر واحد يسرين اثنين he said that one difficulty does not have the ability to overcome two relieves that one difficulty one troublesome situation does not have the ability to overcome two forms of relief and i want you to contemplate on this where is he getting that from where did the salaf they get this statement from waqal al hafiz ibn kathir al hafiz ibn kathir he explains where this statement came from he said and this is why we have to reflect over the quran this is why we have to study why we have to study and to learn so that we may understand we may tap into this treasure and Hafiz Ibn Kathir he mentions he says ma'na hadha the meaning of this anna al-usra mu'arrafun fil halayn he said because the word al-usr 
it comes and it is definite both times it is mentioned in this surah. Both times it's mentioned, it comes connected with the definite article. Fahuwa mufrad. And it's understood from that, that means it is one. The difficulty is the indication of what? One difficulty, and that's why it is restricted and it is connected to the definite article, Alif and Lam, the difficulty. Whereas, Wal Yusru Munakkarun, but Yusr, it comes and it is indefinite. So therefore, Fata'addada. So therefore, it means it is more than one. Because it comes indefinite, it is not restricted. And because it is not restricted, meaning it is not just one, but rather it is more than one. Multitudes of reliefs. So therefore, the Salaf, they used to say, لَنْ يَغْلِبَ عُسْرٌ يُسْرَيْنِ One difficulty will not defeat two reliefs. So with every difficulty, there comes multiple relief. So therefore, this is a glad tiding for the believer that whatever comes to us from difficulty, whatever situation touches us from difficulty and from calamity, there will be multiple reliefs in its wake. So a hardship does not come except that it is followed by and it brings along with it multiple reliefs, multiple ease and the like. So therefore, when we understand and reflect over all of these ni'am, all of these blessings, these bounties in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, Allah ta'ala goes on to say in this tremendous chapter, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبِ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبِ So when you have finished from your work, then worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stand and worship Allah. And make all of your intentions and your hopes sincerely for Allah. إِذَا فَرَغْتَ مِنْ أُمُورِ الدُّنْيَا When you have finished from the affairs of the dunya, فَانْصَبْ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ Then turn adamantly and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I want you to pay attention and to reflect over the meanings that enter into this verse. That once you have finished from your toil of the dunya, once you have finished from your work, then turn to Allah and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone adamantly naam wa qum ilayha nashitan turn to your worship with vigor with energy naam farugh yani farigh uh, albal having none of this stuff on your mind now i want you to reflect over your own situation do we find ourselves that when we worship that we are worshiping Allah with one vigor, and that we are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our minds not being distracted by the dunya. If we don't find this is the case, we need to establish that balance. Allah ta'ala commands us, worship Allah with vigor, and worship Allah while having no distractions of the dunya upon your mind. But why? Because you are finished. You are finished from your work of the dunya. You have finished your shift. You have finished your day at work. It's it, you're off. Why are you thinking about that? Why are you thinking about dunya? It's not the time for dunya. Now is the time for ibadah. Likewise, the salaf they mention this means wa akhlis li rabbik and niya wa and make and, 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 and make your intention pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your hope pure for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the salaf they mention wa qala mujahid fi hadhihi al إِذَا فَرَغْتَ مِنْ 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 أَمْرِ الدُّنْيَا فَقُمْتَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَانْصُبْ لِرَبِّكَ That when you have finished up from your toil of, the, toil of this world, then specifically stand and focus inside of the prayer. Stand and focus inside of the prayer. Likewise, midshif, dhuhr. When it's time for dhuhr, it's not time for work, it's time for dhuhr. Get all that stuff out your mind about what was happening early in the morning when you was at work. Because now it's time for dhuhr. Concentrate and pray your prayer. And then when you're done, get back to whatever it is you need to get back to. But now it's not time for that. Now it's time for the salat. وَعَنْ إِبْنِ مَسْعُودِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عَنْهُ قَالْ إِذَا فَرَغْتَ مِنْ فَرَائِضَ that He said what this also means is that when you finish from the obligatory prayers نَعَمْ فَانْصِبْ فِي قِيَامِ اللَّيْهِ Then be diligent in worshiping Allah 
while standing in the middle of the night and praying, by praying the night prayer that those raka'at that are after Isha, then worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, you find those who are successful, then this is their way. Well, also, Ibn Mas'ud, he said, well, also, this means is that بعد الفراغ من الصلاة وأنت جالس This means that you worship Allah and you call upon Allah, you make dua unto Allah, all of your hope for Allah, upon tawheed sincerely for Allah, when once you have finished your prayers and you are sitting. So when you finish your prayers and you're sitting, remember these verses and make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time for dhikr. Once you have finished your prayers, then make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one reflects upon as he sees that the believer, he is not disconnected from ibadah throughout the course of his day. But rather his day goes from worshipping Allah in one type of worship to worshipping Allah with another type of worship to worshipping Allah with another type of worship. The believer is never disconnected from worship. It is incumbent and it is a must that we adorn ourselves with the likes of these characteristics. If we truly love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we have to imitate him. And this is listened to as after we have heard that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was commanded with here in this chapter, then we should know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was the embodiment of the guidance of the Qur'an. And this is why his character, it was categorized and described as being that of the Qur'an. This is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be. If you love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you imitate him. If you love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then strive to be like him, strive to be upon his way, imitate him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam day to day, not just once a year, not just here, not just there, day to day in your daily life. Imitate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you are upon guidance, then do not worry about those who go astray because they will not hurt you. They only hurt themselves. Remember, that's how you win. That's how you are victorious by staying firm upon your religion, not wavering not being shaken, not giving up, not despairing, but being firm upon your deen. This is how you will win. This is how you will be successful. This is how you will gain victory. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who hear a statement and to follow the best of it.